So then they pulled me aside and said, you know, what are you doing here? Like, this is dangerous. They kept saying terrorists. Stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, yes, I know that it's a dangerous area, but yeah. all the people I've met here have been so friendly. Yeah. Because that's the thing, the media is always quite negative. And they were just worried about my safety. So they said, listen, they, they didn't know if I was allowed to be there or not. So they were radioing people in charge, being like, this foreigner here, is right. he allowed to be here? Right. And then eventually they'd say, yep, we, we can't stop you, so you do your thing, just good luck. Wow. And every time, every time I got, and the, the, I went through maybe 20 of these checkpoints over the course of this day. Yeah. Every time I got there, all the police would always be like, are oh, you allowed to be here? They'd have to radio for permission. They'd say, yeah, you can go. They'd always ask if I had enough water, had enough food. So they wanted to make sure that I was, yeah, you yeah, know, safe. They were so friendly. So it's completely the opposite to what you'd be led to believe exactly. by media. Right, and okay. uh, obviously after getting rejected from Syria border and then from Iraq, yeah. And then obviously after being, oh yeah, I also, oh my god, this, there's so many stories, it's Hold crazy. that thought, let me just check the camera, let's <laughs> yes. stop and start it, we're going to miss it. Right, camera's rolling again. Right, carry on, sorry, where were yeah, we? So yeah, so I remember at a, uh, I remember it, right, yes, go for it. so I've just been uh, sent away from the Iraq border, yep. and I sort of pulled over on the side of the road, only a few kilometres from the border, to take a photo, because it was a beautiful spot, and I did one of my little, my little selfie yeah. videos that I yeah. do, yeah. and uh, then I went to, I put the phone away, and I went to pull off, yeah. and I realised that I'd left the ignition on. Oh no, flat battery. And obviously I've got like so many things being powered from the battery, all these devices, yeah, yeah, yeah. that if you leave the ignition on and for only like a few minutes, you're screwed. Yeah. I've got a flat battery and I'm so, and it's all flat, there's no hills, because I need to find a hill, put it in second gear, bump yeah, start yeah, it and it comes yeah. into life. Yeah. That's the only bad thing about the spike is there's no kick. I, I, yeah, I, I yeah, love having yeah, a kick, a kick yeah. start. Anyway, so I'm having to try, I'm, I'm, I just try to go to the side of the road trying to flag someone down, but there aren't that many vehicles by the Iraqi border. <laughs> okay. um, eventually, this, these like three old men stop. Right. Me. And yeah. they've, they've got they've got their, like their shovel and stuff. They're just three old farmers. Right. And uh, I, I'm trying to explain to them what the issue is, and they're trying to trying to help me. I'm like, no, no. All, all you need to do is can you just push me? Yeah. And they're like, okay. So they get behind me, and these three men are running. These are these are, they're not young. They and they're really sweating, and it's hot as well. <laughs> and they're pushing me, pushing my bike, and I'm trying to. I keep releasing the clutch yeah. when we get speed up, and the bike just doesn't want to start. And I'm like, what is going on? It's this... not a seal again, is it? Oh no! It gets it gets. Oh, it's worse than that. Right. Then. This goes on for about 15, 20 minutes, and they keep pushing me. And these guys are exhausted, and I'm not as exhausted as they are, because all, <laughs> yeah, all I'm yeah. doing is sitting on the bike. Yeah, yeah. But then I suddenly realised, after 15, 20 minutes, I suddenly realised that the, uh, luckily the ignition was on, but the bike was in neutral the whole time. Oh no! Oh, and I was like, oh, I was like, oh my word! Oh. This is, not, I've just made these guys sweat so much. And I'm, so I'm looking at them, I look behind, and I'm like, okay, right, and I'm slowly putting it into, into what, first or second gear, when they're not looking. And I say, right, we'll try one more time. Yeah. They run, and sure enough, I drop the clutch, and it comes into oh, life, and I'm like, God. I'm so, so I, I just ride off very quickly. I rode off very quickly, and I felt so, I felt so bad, but they were amazing. So hopefully they never, they would never watch this video, because they will never know the truth. Knows. And then, yeah, yeah so I finally left that, headed north, and got to another, more and more checkpoints, and they have to radio and whatever, and check your, yeah. who you are. And eventually I get to the, what I didn't realise was the last checkpoint of the day. Yeah. And I pull over. At the checkpoint, they stopped me, and I don't know what was. They, they, they seemed to be very aggressive. These guys, right. and they grabbed me. They grabbed me by the arm. I said, "Get off your bike!" So I had to pull over the bike, and they grabbed, took me off, and they they sort of ushered me down this. So how are you feeling at this stage? Were you absolutely terrified? Crapping yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really, really like, a yeah. lot. And I'm like, I'm also, I'm mainly, I'm more worried about the bike being stolen and right. my gear being stolen off the bike than I am about me. Yeah. And I keep looking back, and they sort of, they take me through their little big concrete bomb-proof wall. Barricade right. they've got set up, and right. then there's all these tanks as well behind, and they take me behind off the road in this long pathway, and it kind of reminds me of like a Bond film. Yeah, like one where they have the exchange. Scary um, biscuits. With the, yeah, yeah, and they yeah, yeah. they take me down this long pathway, and there's this big, big sort of build, sort of basically like an army barracks at the end. Yeah, they take me down this long path. They open up the barracks and they let me in, and they usher me into this small little room and sit me down. Right. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. And the uh, the worst thing is because I'd been I'd not, because I'd be, uh, been on the minefield with trying to hide the passport, I hadn't been able to hide the passport. Right. So I'd actually had the passport in my jacket. So I'm like, this oh, is not no, good. No, They're going to find me with two passports. This is not yeah. ideal. Yeah. So I, um, <laughs> not ideal. <laughs> I, uh, so they, I'm mean, sorry, slyly, I slyly put it under my, under my trousers. Right. Just to hide it there. Right. And they sit me down and they start going through my bags and everything and searching me. Luckily, they didn't find the extra passport. Jeez. And they asked me what I'm doing. I said, I'm just here, just doing a trip and explaining everything to them. And they were really not happy, and they they were started interrogating me, but they spoke no English, so right. they were interrogating me through Google Translate. Oh no! So and obviously That's Google, got and Google sorts of and Google Translate doesn't always do it accurately, so no. I can't remember what they were, but some of the ones were hilarious. Some of the things that, that Google was giving out, I was like, that makes no sense, and I'm trying not to laugh. But I trying, guess yeah, I'm trying to be serious, <laughs> and it was just this went on for hours, and I'm like, they, they, they were just going in circles here, 
and they keep saying terrorist, terrorist, they're not safe, and all this stuff because that's one of the only words they can say. Right. Um, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm never getting out of here. This is not good. And they were really aggressive. And then what? The, to, I think he was the guy in charge. He then gets his more officers to come in, and they then search me again, and all this, it's getting really intense. And then I suddenly remembered that the day before, some guy on Facebook had messaged me through the. Whenever I go to a new country, I always join. This is a, actually yeah, I think to do. Yeah, yeah. If you do a trip, I always join the. Like the Honda CRF 250 group yeah, in that of country. that country. Yeah, exactly. Not all countries have it, but some yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, Turkey yeah. is really popular right. with these bikes. Yeah. Um, so I b- posted some photo on this of my bike in Turkey, saying how much I was loving it, and loads of people have messaged me right. saying if you're here, you know, let's, I'd love to meet you for coffee, or whatever. And this one guy called Zaffer had given me his number, and he'd said, "Call me when you are, you know, nearby. I live in eastern Turkey, right. which, is, which is towards where I was headed. Yeah. Um, if, I can help, if I can help, just let me know." And I suddenly remembered I had this number. And he was, you know, on the same bike as me. So I, so I gave, I found the number, gave it to these guys, these army guys who interrogated me. I said, listen, right. call this number. I've never you, met... you never spoke to the guy. I've never spoken to this guy. Right. I never knew who he was. But right. I said, just, just call this number. He will verify who I am because he's seen me on Facebook. Sure. So they did. They yeah. called this guy Zaffa. And Zaffa answers the phone and they start talking. And suddenly the expression on the guy's face changes. And suddenly he gets, suddenly the whole mood changes in the room. And they, they hang up the phone, give me my phone back. I have no idea what's, what's being said. Yeah. They say, do you want some chai? Do you want some chai? Like, do you want some tea? I'm like, yes. So they rush out, they get me some chai. They say, are you hungry? I'm like, yes, I'm really hungry. So come with us. So they grip me up and they usher me into the, the canteen, the mess room, where all the soldiers for the region, turns out it's the headquarters for the army base for right. Eastern Turkey. They put me in this room and I have, I have dinner with all the soldiers. Wow, right in the canteen. In the canteen. I'm with, and they're all, we're all talking, la- laughing, having a good time. And it was like, what? And then I found out later on, because I ended up meeting Zaffa that evening. Right. I rode through the night and met up with Zaffa in a town called Van. Yeah. Um, Turns out, Zaffa, he is the commander of the SWAT team for, for Eastern Turkey. So he's got a, he's got a CRF-250, but he's at, that's just, wow. well, and, and Viking is his hobby, but his main thing is he is the commander of the SWAT team, Isn't that of like the elite, of the elite police force. And so when they, when they got on the phone, they knew who Zaffa was. Brilliant. So, oh, what, so oh when they, what are the chances? What are the chances, right? <laughs> so, so, like, I, so I escaped getting blown up by a mine early in the day, and then I find out that the, the guy who messaged me on Facebook turned out was What's actually the, commander of the SWAT team, of the elite police force. Is that? I mean, it was, so they felt so guilty that they spent all this time interrogating me, but they, they thought that I was a friend of Zaffa's. What would have happened if it wasn't for Facebook? I mean, I mean saved your life. It literally I did. I would, I would still be in prison now. So yeah. it was amazing, and he was, he was incredible. And when I, when I finally got to this town where Zaffa is stationed, yeah. He put me up in the army hotel, so I ended up sharing a room with two other officers who like snored so loudly I didn't sleep much that night. <laughs> and then he kept me, met me in the morning, took me out for breakfast with all the other soldiers in, 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 in his cool thing. And that? like, and he it was it was just amazing. He even he even sent one of his officers out on a motorbike to meet me at the sort of the entrance to the town, to the gates of the town, to bring me into the city. Isn't that brilliant? Like it was just it was a crazy Fantastic. experience. Talking about being hungry, actually, one of the other questions that I had a few questions I definitely want to ask you. One yeah. that sticks in my mind. Was what do you do about eating on these trips generally? I mean, number one, um, do you sort of plan right? Well, you know, when I'm on a tour, I'm, I'm thinking of food as soon as twelve o'clock comes, and I find a nice cafe somewhere uh, and spend a load of money. But in your case, probably not. You just have to scramble for worms or something. So, <laughs> yeah. so how does that work? And what state is your gut feeling? Oh my gosh, my gut. So now that I'm back in England, my my guts have finally settled. Right. But the past six months. I don't know why. I mean, everyone knows about Delhi Valley. You know, yeah. when you go to India, you know, everyone gets sick normally. Yeah. And then you get over it. And I didn't, I didn't expect to get sick in Pakistan, but it's obviously very similar food to India. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, the food in Pakistan is amazing. I love the food there. It's really, really incredible, but yeah. it's very spicy and yeah. it does not do well for my stomach. Yeah. So let's just say, without in too much detail, the past six months, I've, I've had to deal with that. You know, just it's become part of my life. The fact <laughs> yeah. that it is not, it is not stable. So now I'm back home. I'm absolutely loving it. It's everything is everything's back to normal again. <laughs> um, but it's yeah, just lots of curry. But yeah, not, when I was going through Europe, I to obviously keep costs down. Yeah. I uh, would just cook on my stove when I was would be in my tent, yeah. and I can only cook one dish, which is spaghetti carbonara, and it's <laughs> super easy. You literally go to I buy in the in the day. Yeah. I go to the supermarket. I buy the double pack of lardons from the Carrefour or yeah, the Intermarché, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, double pack of lardons. I'd have a block of parmesan cheese, which would last me the week, uh, and then yeah, just get some mozzarella and some pasta, shove it all into one pot. I used to have like five cooking pots. When, yeah. I, when I left England, I had five pots, yeah, loads yeah. of cutlery. Now I've just got one pot, because yeah. all you need is one pot. You shove it all into one pot, and you've got spit carbonara. Fantastic. And it's simple, it's quick, it's easy. it's easy. It never gave me food poisoning. I used to love it, now I can't stand it, because I had it yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I did through Europe, and then through, as you get further east, basically you you'll find that you actually don't have to cook for yourself or go to a restaurant because people, people just look will you. look after you. Um, one thing I realised is 
is that I didn't. I only recently found this out. Is that in the Islamic countries? Correct me if I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But someone told me before I left Pakistan. They said that a guest is seen as a gift from Allah. Right. So in Iran, Pakistan, obviously they're Muslim countries. They believe that a guest is. Is, is a gift from Allah, and if if if, if, exactly. if if a guest stays in their home, I think Allah will bless the house, or will bless wow. them, or bless their family. So they really want to host people. Great. Some lots of houses actually. In fact, is it Islam? I'm not sure. My my knowledge of religions is rubbish, but I got a feeling that in in Islamic mosques or whatever they're called, um, there's actually a, like a guest area where if you if you go there as a non-Muslim, they actually welcome you and feed you, and that's again it's part of the thing. This really gift. I yeah. did not know that. I'm pretty sure you can go to any mosque. Yeah. That's the right word. Uh, I'm showing <laughs> yeah. this outrageous how ignorant I am about religion, but you can go in. They yeah. might actually, maybe this is Sikhs. I know we're talking rubbish. I'm sure there's any Sikhs watching. They can put me right here. But uh, but isn't that great? Though? But it's the whole gift from God, a visitor. Thing. Yeah, it's the exactly. same principle as what. And I'm actually, lots of as you, funny you say that because lots of houses um, in Pakistan and Iran, they actually have a spare room always available for a guest. Isn't that great? So sometimes I go somewhere, and then you know, I so I'd go. Sometimes I'd be in my tent, and the next day I'll be in a double bed with my own bathroom. Wow. You know, li like living like a king. So great? it really it changes quite a bit. So so the way to blag yourself some uh, some freer commo. How have you how have you found that you've done that then? Well, normally, I mean, uh, yeah, it's just crazy. You know, you'd be you'd pull over at a service station or even just at the side of the road. Yeah. Maybe you got to check a map or you just want to get some food out of your bag or whatever. Somebody will within, especially as you get further east, within you won't be alone for more than a few seconds. Somebody will pull over. They'll see you. you're clearly a foreigner because you've got. Yeah. Foreign bike with yeah. boxes on, yeah. all your and your gear on. All the locals yeah. just wear. You've got an oil leak, and somebody's yeah. got to push your bike. <laughs> <laughs> so you stand out massively. So they'll and they'll put, and they want to talk to you, and they'll you just start talking. They'll say, "Well, what are you doing?" And I'll say, "Well, I'm just heading this way." They say, "Where are you staying?" I say, "I've no idea. I'm just going to find somewhere to camp." Yeah. Uh, and often than not, they'll say, "Listen, no, they they don't want you to camp. They want they want to get to know about. You. They they want to talk to you and hear your story." So they'll often say, "Come and stay with me." Isn't so often, yeah, often when I say to someone, "Hey." Or if you go and you ask someone, hey, do you know, is there a place I can camp, put my tent up safely? Often they'll say, no, come and, come and stay with, uh, with us. Like, or the mayor of the town will, will look after you. Or the police station, you'll be able to stay on the floor of the local police station. I stayed in Brilliant. some really weird places. This is great. Um, How fantastic is that? So let's just wind forward a little bit. So you're in Pakistan now. Well, you're in Blythe at the moment, but technically on the trip, you're in Pakistan. You've had a bit of a visa issue. That, that's why you're back here. Yes. So why are you back here? And how long are you staying in? So, tell me a bit about where you've been staying in Pakistan as well. Yeah, so I've actually spent the past, what, six months or so in Pakistan. Yeah. And my visa is now finished. So you can actually extend the visa twice, I believe. Um, no, you can extend, yeah, you, you extend the visa once. But once you've extended it once, you can't extend it again. So I've already extended my visa once. Right. Um, when I first arrived into Pakistan, my visa was about to expire. So I quickly went to the embassy or whatever in Lahore yeah. and extended it once there. Yeah, yeah. And they gave me a six months. Visa for free as well. Happy normally, days. normally it costs lots of money, right. but the concert we I got really well with him. We started talking, uh, and he never charged me, which is oh, amazing. Fantastic. And also, normally they only give you a one month or two months extension. They gave me six months for free. So it pays. It pays off being being friendly and, uh, and nice. I tell you, if you do nothing else in life but be nice to people, you go far. Anyway, yeah, I think they're pretty youngsters watching. <laughs> <Right. Okay, laughs> yeah, carry on. And uh, yeah, so. And I love it so much, I don't want to leave. And yeah. so my only option is, I can't extend it again, the only option is to get a brand new visa. Um, with the, I think, Iran, Pakistan, and maybe India, you can't get your visa on the road. No, India you can, actually, but Iran, Pakistan, you can only get your visa in the country you were born in. Oh, so if, you, if you've got a British passport, you can only get it from... So from you've no choice but basically to come back yeah. to London. If you've so. got a US passport, you can only get it from your visa from the US. Right. Your brand new, you, can't, right. you can't get uh, it on the road, sadly. So... My only option is either to leave and just go to India and continue east. Um, but I don't want to do that. I, I love Pakistan. I've got yeah. so much more to see. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, let's leave the bike. Yep. Leave the bike in Pakistan and fly back here. So I'm now back in England. And then my plan initially was just to come back, get my visa and fly back. Yeah. But now that I'm back here, yeah. um, ev along the, over this trip, everyone's been, on, everyone's been saying, oh, have you been to this place in England? Have you been here? Have you been here? And loads of people in Pakistan I've met have actually been to more places in England in the UK than I have. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know what? Mate, while I'm here, why don't I take this opportunity to do a little a mini bike tour around the UK? Fantastic. So, the amazing guys at Cooper B Motorcycles uh, in not Nottingham, Northampton. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a bad. That's a bad one. It's close enough. They're giving they're giving me a, a Royal Enfield to to from a little UK trip. Brilliant. So I think I'm having the Himalayan. Great. Or Himalayan. 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 Yeah. And I'm going to do a little maybe just for a week or two and just explore the UK, which really? I've never done. I've only ever explored London. And up, up to, Great up to Don't get too comfortable. Don't let your guts, you know, being calm, put your phone back. And another, so I think I'll be here for a few weeks, and then I'll, and then I'll eventually head back. 
uh, maybe a month or so. So where, have you, left, so where have you left your bike in uh, Pakistan? Oh, funny you should ask. So the bike is currently with the Prime Minister's family. So anyone, anyone who watches, if you know Imran Khan, or actually, it's actually Imran Khan. Oh, okay. I thought it was a K A K H A N Khan. Yeah, yeah. It's actually Khan apparently. Okay. It's like a like a flemmy sound. Oh, that's good. Um, so Imran Khan, the famous uh, cricketer, yeah. uh, he's obviously now become the prime minister of of Pakistan, and uh, I with, somehow I don't know how this happened, but I ended up staying in his family's house. Because, oh, because hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't just say, I don't know how this happened. You don't just turn up in the country and get to the Prime Minister's house. So how, just, how so, that work then? So basically, uh, Imran's, Imran's sister yeah. is married to uh, a guy, I always say his name, he's married to a guy who is a biker. Right. Who's actually got a BMW GS 1200. Oh, good man. Yeah. So, and through that, through some sort of, I think maybe through the internet or somehow... There's a, there's a bike club in Pakistan right. of like maybe 20 bikers. Yeah. And I think through that, somehow we got in touch and I got to meet some of the guys who were part of the club. Right. And they said, oh, you can, you can stay in our house as right. long as you like. And then one of the guys left, had to go to, on holiday somewhere. So he said, listen, I'm closing up my house now, yeah. but I'll put you in touch with one of the other guys from the bike club, Fantastic. which happened to be this guy. What, Imran Khan's? Imran's brother, brother-in-law. Oh, okay. brother-in-law. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Right. And, uh, I ended up stay- and I didn't know that he was his brother-in-law all the time, so yeah. I turned up at his house, stay with him, have an amazing time. Yeah. Um, I go out with, uh, with uh, Imran's nephews, I think it would be, Imran's nephews. Right. Have some great times with them, and, like, and, just, and then, and then uh, yeah, somehow I eventually discovered that, actually, because I, I, I was being photographed, because people thought that I was... One of the family. One of the family, and, and then I was like, what's going on here? Then I found out from from asking while I was being photographed that turned out they thought that I was Imran Khan's son who's actually been studying in England how who's my age that? then I was like what? I was like, what? why do they think I'm his son and they said oh because actually he's our uncle I was like so it's only what? then that you found out then I found out and then, then I ended been up hanging with Imran with, with his family possibly. and uh, and then on, obviously Eid is like the Islamic equivalent of Christmas yeah the biggest holiday of the year and I spent Eid yeah with uh, Imran, <laughs> Imran Khan's what family an which, and, and, I, and I was there as well I mean it gets me better because I was there in Lahore with the family for the election. So I was staying with his family when he was voted and he when he became prime minister. What an amazing thing to it's, do. It's just been crazy. So I, I got to le- I got to learn the local the the PTI uh, their their song which they sing for the party. Called this, tab- this this motorcycling thing is amazing. I mean let's I mean I don't want to belittle what you've done because going around the world on a bike is not something for everybody. It's an amazing thing in itself. But uh, at the end of the day you just jumped on one of these things that anyone can buy and ridden off around the world. That's literally not done. And now suddenly you're staying with the Prime Minister. I know. I mean, what, oh, that's just amazing, isn't it? It is, it is absolutely crazy. What a great thing to it's do. It's just, it's been unbelievable. And uh, let me just check the timing again. Hang on, it's, uh, oh, I'll just check the camera. Oh, crap. <laughs> All right, so as it so happens, I just caught the camera in time there, and uh, I mean, I could talk to you all day, literally, and we probably will in the pub afterwards. But, uh, <laughs> yes. It's been fantastic to have you back again, Ben. It's been great. I, in a way, I hope your visa runs out again, so you can come back and tell us some more. So <laughs> before we wrap up, then, so what are the plans now? You're going to go back to Pakistan. You're going to do your little England tour, and uh, I say little England tour on the Himalayan. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing how you get on there. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm not quite sure it's going to, you know, be up there with those pictures that you've been posting on Instagram, but we'll see. Oh yeah. And then Actually, do people do people still do people ride by? in the winter. Uh, well, I, I do. Will, will I, I meet any bikers when I do my trip? Not too many, actually. No. I don't build your hopes up too oh, much. No. About well, if there's anyone trip. watching who is around the UK, yeah, yeah, mess, actually, yeah, message again, me. Details you below. Me? Yeah, that'd be good. Cool, yeah, awesome. awesome. You'll get free beds again. Brilliant. <gasps> yeah, anyone in Scotland, Wales, anywhere in the UK, whatever. Let us know. Brilliant. Okay, so so once you've done the England tour, so what's that going to be? A month or something? Yeah. Uh, back to Pakistan, find your bike again. Get my bike. And then what's the And plan? then from, yeah, so from, I'll do a bit, a few more months in Pakistan. I want to go to Karachi, back into the Himalayas as well to see it in springtime. Then I'll be going across to India. Yep. For, and then into Nepal, down to southern India, across to Sri Lanka, then up to Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, and then island hop through all the islands of Indonesia to East Timor. I'll ship the bike from East Timor to northern Australia, to Darwin, ride all the way around Australia. And then when I'm there, I'm, my money will actually be gone. I'll be gone. So I've got to find a job for six months or so. Yeah. Um, hope I probably will run out of money before then, but I need to figure out what to do. But I'll figure something out, sure hopefully. Right. And yeah. then I'll find a job for six months. And as I said, as you said, once you've got the bike, that's the most expensive part. Yeah. After that, all you got to pay, all you got to save money for is food, and fuel. fuel, and accommodation. But you're camping and it's cheaper. Yeah. So I think six months of working, you know, a few jobs. Yeah. I could probably save up enough money to then ship the bike to New Zealand. Do North South Island, then ship to uh, South America, to Argentina, yeah. and then ride up the Americas. So I'll wow. go from Ushaya, which is the southernest tip of South America, 
up the South America to Colombia, across the Darien Gap to Panama, up to Mexico, into North America, into Canada, up to Alaska to Prudhoe Bay, which is the northernest tip of uh, the Americas. Then in Canada, I'll go back to Canada, find a job there, save money for six months, one year or so, and then I'll ship the bike to from probably from maybe from Anchorage or, or from Canada yeah, yeah. over to South Korea, then to Japan. Then to wow. into Vladivostok, which is Russia. Yeah. Maybe to Magadan and do the Road of Bones. Yeah. yeah. From Siberia and then head basically back the way I've come, but just above. So then sort of So you won't actually go around the world then, you're gonna go around the world and back. Pretty much, yes. Because oh, otherwise, yeah. otherwise you miss you Yeah, miss yeah. No, so what, that, what that way mean? I'll then do east uh, sort of Siberia, into China, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan. Back into Russia again, yeah. then up to Scandinavia to the expensive part, yeah. uh, up to up to the is it Nordcap to yeah, Northern yeah, Lights yeah, yeah. into Norway, yeah, yeah. and then the final leg will be sort of Nordcap down quickly through Europe to find it ready, down yeah. to Morocco, yeah. into Africa. Quickly I'll do Africa. <laughs> I'll ride down the west coast of Africa to Cape Town. I'll stop there. I'll actually when I'm in Norway, I'll stop in Norway for a bit and save up some money there yeah. to then do the to Africa. When I'm in Cape Town, I'll stop again, save up some more money to then ride up the east coast of Africa this time. Maybe zigzag in the middle. Who knows? Who knows what we'll do? I'll put you off a really crazy route through there, um, and then up Africa. Back to Europe and back to London. So the sounds of it, it's going to be another five, ten years. It will be, it'll be yeah. If I keep stopping to work and if I keep coming home for visas or whatever, it will be ten, twenty years. Hopefully, by the time I finish my trip, I'll finally have a beard. But I'm not holding, <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. Well, at least the man bun's good. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. So I forgot about that. I mean, that, that sounds just absolutely incredible, and I'm really chuffed that we've been able to catch up again. So do keep in touch. Definitely. And, uh, if you do come back for another visa, let's have another catch up and find out yes. how it went on the rest of that bit of the trip. If not, you know how to keep in touch with him now via your social media feeds. Or indeed, if when you do the Australia thing, maybe we can do something on Skype or whatever, but we'll definitely... That'd be awesome, we'll yeah. Maybe the technology moved on and I'll know how to do that by then. But anyway, <laughs> so it's been fantastic, Ben. Thank you so much no, for coming. thank you. It's, it's been, been amazing. fascinating to talk to you. Uh, what an amazing life you've built for yourself. It sounds <laughs> yeah. like it's going to go on forever. So, uh, I hope so. Great stuff. So uh, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed that, folks. Something a little bit different. It's been brilliant having you here, Ben. Thanks for that. And uh, look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, it's uh, cheerio from me and goodbye from him. Cheerio. <laughs> See you.